Hello, hello, it's Jane here um, and it's the next vlog of the Cornish Knitter. In my video or my vlog, I catch you up to date with what I've been knitting, what I'm planning to knit, what my favourite accessories are, share a little bit about what we're doing in the shop. And at the end of this video, um, I do have a, a little bit of, um, of a video clip around. I had a little early morning walk in Falmouth in the sunshine. I just walk you through Falmouth town. So I hope you're going to enjoy today's video and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so probably should start with what I'm wearing and I've got this on, it's actually a bit warm, although it's sort of half past six in the evening here in Falmouth. Um, here in the UK, we've got really hot temperatures. It's been beautiful for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and um, yeah, I just don't feel like wearing wool particularly, but I wanted to put this on to show you. Uh, this is probably my sixth ranunculus. I know many of you will have knitted it many of time, many times, uh, but I have to say it is a bit of a favourite pattern of mine. Um, I just like the little bit of interest around the yoke, um, how easy it is to knit, how quick it knits up. I like the shorter sleeve version. Um, and you can knit it in all sorts of different weights of yarn. In uh, in the past, her pattern was um, just one size, but now she has rewritten it so that it's sort of got multiple sizes from sort of quite a small size up to a very big size. It's meant to have a lot of positive ease, like it has here. I've got it on over a dress at the moment, but as I said, I'm rather warm, so it may, may come off in a minute as well. Um, so this, this um, knit, Took me about a week uh really really quick knit um i knitted it up you can knit it in different weights of yarn as i said but i knitted it up in um and i haven't got the color in at the moment it's literally arriving to back in tomorrow um this was um the fiber company amble but this color was exodus which was the navy blue but we've got a delivery tomorrow morning with this back in stock but um, so this is the Fibre Company sock yarn. It does have a little bit of recycled nylon in. I think it's about 10% nylon. Um, super for socks, one of my favorite, favorite sock yarns. But it is great for other things too, as a fingering weight yarn. Um, and I put my Exodus one with some Kremka, Kremka Silky Kid, um, which just brightens it a little bit, just held the two together. But I was also thinking as I pick this up, I was thinking actually that would make quite a nice, that would make quite a nice, I like dark red um, and it sort of lifts my my complexion a little bit. So I'm <laughs> quite tempted to make one, one in that. So watch this space, it, it might come soon. Thank you for all your remarks about um, my last video because I'd just been recovering from COVID so I had a bit of a croaky voice. Um, I'm all better, thank you. Took a little while for the brain fog to disappear. <laughs> My family would probably say it still hasn't disappeared. Um, but it did take a little while for the brain fog to disappear. But um, yeah, back functioning on all cylinders now. So um, really relieved to to have got over it. And hopefully, hopefully I won't catch it again anytime soon. Uh, thank you for all the lovely comments on my last video, um, all the suggestions. I'm glad a lot of you are finding my little tips and hints quite useful. Um, I talked through gauge last time, so if you want to want to sort of see through, see the the clip about what I how I sort of measure gauge and the tools that I use, look at episode five, the previous video, because it will have a little bit in there. Um, but it is amazing how gauge really flummoxes people. If they don't hit gauge, do I go up a size needle? Do I go down a size needle? What if it's drapey um, as a fabric in terms of the, knit, the final knitted? Will it stretch at all? Um, certainly my experience, if you have super wash yarns, expect it to stretch. Um, so super wash yarns on the whole, particularly sort of merino based, uh, while beautifully soft and drapey, will quite often stretch a little bit as well. So remember that once you've blocked it. And um, a number of you asked whether I do a little video about blocking too. I have done one in the past, so 
maybe next time I'll put in um, the video on, on how I go about blocking garments because again, that sort of professional finishing of garments makes a massive difference. I call it the magic that happens because it gets rid of lots of little imperfections. It sort of makes, sets the shape of it, gets rid of any wrinkly hems and sets your neckline. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. If you've not blocked garments before, particularly if it's natural fibers, don't miss out that step because you will be so grateful that you've done it and spent that time just letting it sort of rest and dry and let all those fibres swell up. It's also just lovely because so many of you are across the world. I get to hear from people all across the world and it's amazing that how far this vehicle of YouTube can reach people and I really do feel like we're getting like a really lovely community and it's so nice to hear from people from Australia and Canada and the US and Germany and now we're beginning to see some people if they are visiting Cornwall they're actually coming and popping into the shop we've had a number of people from Germany in recently who all have been watching the YouTube um, and it's just so lovely to see and people coming off the cruise ships who have been watching the YouTube and, and are making the point of coming in so we're very grateful to you um, but it's lovely to meet some of you in person too um, and obviously a number of you have asked whether we ship overseas we do ship all around the world um, if you do want to go and have a look at our website um, stitchesandcream.co.uk then do uh, go on and we ship anywhere in the world obviously the cost is more expensive the bigger your parcel and wherever we're sending it but but um, don't be put off by that because we can so if, if there's something you really want then we can do that so I'm going to go on now to um, finished objects or off the needles even I think I call it off the needles so off the needles Okay, so my first off the needles, I've got my trusty little foam body here. She's got a flatter chest than me and, and she's got a waist <laughs> and I haven't. <laughs> so it, um, but um, I put pictures of this up on Instagram. This is my Sea Haven Tea by JSTAT Knitwear Designs. Absolutely loved this pattern. Um, love the stitch definition so i've knitted it in a yarn called luma and i'll show you luma in a minute it has got some cotton in it um which is lovely it keeps it nice and cool this pattern um is just this sort of yoke detail um the lady who's designed this has done a whole series around the sea so i think she's got sea field which is another sweater and she's just released another one and for the life of me i can't think what it is i'll put it below the name of the other sweater in the series. Um, but they're all really beautiful patterns, all reminiscent of, um, there's pennants that you get on the sailing ships. There's all sorts of different designs and she's she, all the series is in this sort of theme. Um, and you can knit them in short sleeves and long sleeves. In fact, I'm going to do a number of ladies who've come in to do other workshops have asked whether we can do this as a, a sort of top-down sweater workshop in long sleeves for the winter um, for those people that haven't knitted a top-down sweater before because it's a it's a lovely pattern to do the German short rows and you do have German short rows come here underneath the pattern so you sort of do that bit here to add a little bit of length to it, it it's I've knitted a size I knitted a size three but I have lost quite a bit of weight over the last just life things have been happening um but i have lost quite a bit of weight over a, a stone in weight over the last few weeks and um it's actually quite baggy on me so i would probably have knitted a size smaller but i still love it and thank you for all the love on instagram for it um just out of the way um luma does come in a number of colors including that again we're getting that color in um and i'm just looking at the, the makeup of it it is 50 percent wool and 25 percent cotton 15 percent linen and 10 percent silk so um really i, I do like that sort of brick 
back to red again. I do like that bricky red, but it gives you wonderful stitch definition. Um, and this one here, just to show you stitch definition, show you one of the samples that we've got here in the shop. This is the, I think it's pronounced Scylla Slipover Mini by Petite Knits. Um, but look at that stitch definition on that from this yarn. So it's a great one for um, knitting patterns with that little sort of subtle design on it so that you can see it. So that is my second finished object because this was my first one. Um, I wanted to also show you um, another yarn we've got in the shop is, um, I'll show you, bring it up. It's called Love Tanned by Camo Rose. Uh, and again, getting a delivery, a new delivery of this in. So it's all, we are, we're doing, um, we've got quite a turnover of yarn at the moment. But if you, if you're ever interested in any of the yarns and they're not in stock, if you click on it, it will give me um, a, when it's back in stock request. And I know then how much to order and we can get most of our yarns in really quickly. So um, do go on and do that if you are interested in something and it's not in stock. And I will make sure that it comes in and I'll get it out to you as quickly as I can. But this, this yarn here has got some linen in it. And it is, just trying to look at the blend. Oh, where is that gone? And it's on the label. That's unusual. It's sort of that chain construction. Um, so where it's created and it's done in a chain. I think it, I don't know if it's 100% linen. Oh, it is 100% linen. Um, it's a Danish yarn and I couldn't, I hadn't interpreted it. Um, and I knit this tea. Um, tea is probably not something that I would wear particularly myself but I have knitted it for the shop to show off the yarn and this is the streamlined tea uh, which uh, is a, a super simple pattern uh, and whilst knitting with linen is probably not my favorite thing to do because it's got no give in it um, actually I do like the finished garment and it is nice and cool if you want to wear it as I said I don't particularly like something that shows too much up here and I'm never a lover of my arms being exposed um, so that you can see you can see my uh, bingo wings as as I call them so um, but I've really enjoyed knitting that and it's a great yarn um, and it's not too rigid on your hands because some linens I find are really unforgiving on your hands so so that is that one and I think that's all I've finished since I last spoke to you. So we're going to move on to under construction. Okay, so um, last time I was going to be casting this one on. This is the Sorrel. Oh, I've got that one. This, this sleeve has just gone onto the needles. Just picked up the stitches. Needs blocking. Uh, very nearly finished. I've just got that one sleeve to do. So this is the, um, oh, what's it called? Summer Sorrel? Something like that. Again, I'll put it, put it below. Uh, by Wool and Pine. Um, so I've used two colours of Pixie Yarn. This one here is... Um, I don't know if I've still got it in. I'll pop the colours in the notes. Don't forget to check. A number of you have asked me where um, about pattern details and yarn details. I always put it in the notes, which should be underneath here. Um, I know this one is pink and posies. This one here. And this begins with a P and I cannot for the life of me think what it is, which is typical of me. Um, it's a short sleeved. Um, I do need to, you knit it. You knit the yoke um, and this design. Well, this is a dip stitch here. Um, so you knit this design front facing. And then once you've got to the end of the dip stitch, sort of summer solstice, that's what this tea is called. 
I knew it would come to me in the end. Um, then you turn the sweater inside out because the rest of it is, as you can probably see, reverse stocking stitch. Um, so you knit it inside out from, from there on in. A um, couple of different techniques for me and I th thought I'd do a little video which I'm going to insert in a moment and just show you what those techniques were for me. I've never done a um, I-cord cast on for a neckline before so that was a new one on me um, and I really like the effect of it. The I-cord cast on gives you a nice sort of rolled finished um, turn on the on the cast on uh, but it was one that I hadn't tried before so I thought I'd show you excuse the nails um, I have gel nails and one of them just peeled off in the sunshine <laughs> um, so I need to get them done again um, but how you do this and I, it was it was a new technique to me I used I cord bind offs and I cord edging I'd not actually cast on with an eye cord before, so I thought I'd quickly show you how you do it. So you create a uh, slip knot, as you normally would, and you use a long tail cast on to cast on three stitches. Now, obviously, uh, you don't need a hugely long tail for three stitches. So um, I've already got my first stitch, which is my slip knot. I'm just going to do one two more casts on leaving myself probably a sort of six inch say well I had about 15 centimeter long tail and to get the eye cord edge we need to get the working yarn to the back of the stitches so we slip those three stitches back onto the left hand needle as so and now you can see that the working yarn is coming from the back of the work um, so to achieve this for the first stitch you knit into the front of that first stitch and without slipping it off rotate it round and knit into the back of it so you create an additional stitch and then you slip it off onto your right hand needle with the next two stitches you just knit as normal I'm working with thick needles so you can see it, but it's like working with sausages. <laughs> Not my favourite. I don't like working with really thick ones. So now we have four stitches. And what we do is slip the first three back onto that left hand needle. And we're going to be working on those again, leaving that fourth stitch on your right hand needle. So first stitch we knit into the front and into the back again, creating that additional stitch and slip it off and then just simply knit the last two stitches on the left hand needle and then repeating that routine slip those first three stitches back onto your left hand needle and then you increase into that first stitch front knit into the back simple knit and as you can see Gradually, each time you do this, you're adding an additional stitch and you're sort of pulling your working yarn as you slip it back from the back and you start to get this nice rolled sort of edge. As I said, I've done this in a, in a super chunky yarn just so that it hopefully is easier for you to see. Um, but yeah, it gave me a really nice finish and a neck on that summer sorrel tee. So I hope you find it interesting. But if you're thinking about it, great one to do. I did it as a fade. So I started to do the fade introduction here. I probably could have, I was just a bit nervous that I was gonna run out of the, the darker pink because it, um, oh, it's, it's really bugging me what it's called. Peas, peas something or other. I will put it in the notes. Um, I, I This takes up quite a bit of yarn. So I was like a bit worried that I was gonna run out of the darker pink. Um, but as it was, I I probably have quite a, not quite a bit, but enough left over that I could have started the fade a bit further down, which if I was to knit it again, that's probably where I'd start it. I did reintroduce the darker pink again down the bottom just to make sure that um, I had enough yarn. And I did make a note on the fade 
well where I'd got to so that when I picked up the stitches for the arms I could continue where I was um, it does have some short rows in the back just here before you start so you sort of do an extra little line of the dip stitch to add a little bit of length but yeah really loved that and um, I was thinking what else what else could I knit this in? Um, and there's nothing to say you couldn't make it a long sleeve, you know, just adapt it and make a long sleeve. But I really like this design by Wool and Pine. And I thought it was a really nice knit. So I quite liked those two colours, which I thought were quite fresh. I don't know. I definitely have the darker one against my skin. I don't know whether that one's um, a bit too light for my skin, but I like those two together. I also thought you could knit it in a sort of more natural, neutral. So those two, sorry, were pixie yarns again. Uh, these are camel's yarns, but I did think that those two would be quite nice together because they they would sort of blend into each other. Um, this one is Flotsam and Jetsam. So it's a fingering weight yarn. I should have said that to start with. And that's intertidal, which is probably one of our most popular ones. So, yeah, great knit. Really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed knitting it very close to finishing it. And then I shall just block it and it will be done, which is exciting. My other project that I'm working on at the moment is actually some crochet. Um, and I haven't done very much. Um, I did. I did do one complete side of this <laughs> this top and then I realized I've made a mistake right in the beginning so I actually ripped it all out which I hate doing um, but it's quite sort of lacy and holy so I'm gonna hold it up here now this sweater is called the kelp sweater or kelp jumper um, it's sort of an over top that you would wear over a camisole top or a vest or a t -shirt, white t-shirt. Um, the Kelp Crochet Company is a, I think she's a student here in Falmouth and she's got into crochet design and she's come into the shop. She's lovely. Come into the shop quite a few times. We're lucky to have the university here because they have uh, textile courses they've got fashion courses they've got art courses so we've got a lot of very creative people here um and so she's been doing some designing and i wanted to make this now this is a linen blend um yarn again camel's yarn again um as you can see um hannah's yarn is a, a real fave of mine um and it's done in a dk on a four and a half millimeter hook really simple repetitive two row pattern and the, the design is so simple it's basically two rectangles and then another two for the sleeves and you sew it all together so it's a really straight very simple design um the yarn i've used is uh her rustic dk and that's 50 percent baby alpaca 25 percent linen and 25 percent silk and it is gorgeous um i've used uh, the colourway called Marazine. Um, um, we don't have any in stock at the moment, but I'm just about to reorder that in. Uh, but we do have another one of her colourways in this, and it's called Morverin. Now, the pattern itself um, has said that I ne needed four skeins of this. I don't think I'm going to need anywhere near as much of that. I think three will be more than enough uh, to get that finished. But I'm really enjoying the crochet um, just as a little little change. And um, yeah, I'm sort of, because I've fin nearly finished that summer solstice tea, I'm sort of, oh, what's next? Do I do another summer top? Or um, shall I do a summer shawl? Just a lightweight, sort of really light linen-y shawl that I can just throw over. At the moment doesn't feel like I could wear a shawl, but... I know, I know that the weather will change again. After all, this is England and particularly Cornwall. Uh, so I am debating what to do next, but um, yeah, I can't be very long without a project ready to go. I am knitting socks at the moment, but I can't show you the socks because they are our own designs and they are part of a sock club, which we'll be launching 
um, properly in September. So watch this space for that because that will be a subscription service, um, our own design socks, showcasing lots of different British yarns particularly. Um, and uh, you'll get lots of little Cornish goodies and little good, little nice little things in your in your box. And there'll also be a digital version of it. But we're trialing it at the moment. Um, I'm knitting up some of the first socks. Uh, so I can't show you them because they're a surprise. But I, as soon as I can show you, I will do. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I also talked last time, a number of you had asked me whether I'd do a knit along and I've, I've never done one before. I've never participated in one, I've never run one. So I have been doing a little bit of research to look at what that looks like and what we could do. And I think we reached a consensus last time um, and all your comments was that you'd like to do a shawl. Um, so I am going to put up a, um, a picture with five options of shawl for you to have a look at um, and I'll number them. And if you could vote in the comments below and tell me what your thoughts are about which one you'd like to knit. Um, I was thinking it would be nice to have a little bit of design in it to keep it interesting. Um, I'd like to knit one that I've not knitted before as well and I will put together some yarn packs um, if people are struggling with the colours to use. I thought I'd, I'd do one that's not just one colour, maybe two to three colours. But anyway, do take a look at the, um, the clip I'm going to put up in a minute um, and do vote in your comments below obviously with the comments make loads of comments about anything uh, i love hearing from you love hearing what you're up to what you're doing um so yeah do, do comment because that makes a really big difference to me because it means that i feel that i'm connecting with you and uh, and i do try and go back to every single one of you if you've taken the time to comment i really appreciate it and i will try and respond to every single one of you when you've done it I'm going to talk now about my favourite knitting accessories. You've seen a few um, and this one is quite a simple one really. Um, it is it is my darning needle. Um, so can you see that there? It's probably an old case. So I really like the, um, I'm hoping you can see this properly i really like the curved tip on a darning needle um, i like metal ones i don't like plastic ones at all um, i find they catch um, i don't like them at all but that curve there makes it so much easier uh, can you see it against me there we are um, that makes it so much easier when you're sewing seams together or sewing in threads um, I'm I'm all for making life easy um, and yeah such a simple little thing but if you can get the ones the make that I use is a is Millward M M Millard Millward I don't know how you pronounce it um, I find they're really good so yeah so nice easy simple one really from me this time uh, those of you that have um, Recently, we put up something which was uh, some bags that were made locally as well. So I'm going to show those as a bit of a nice accessory. So um, I'm looking around because they're all around me here in the shop. Yeah, I'll get that one. That's that, so. so these bags here. They're called, uh, they're from a company called the Mariners Company locally. She's a local lady um, and she makes these bags out of uh, ship sails and they are amazing. They are nice and deep. They are flat bottomed. They sit nicely on the floor. They have these lovely pockets on the outside. 
all the way around so there's three of them and we've got them in the two colors and these are the large bags i'm showing you here and we do have we do have a smaller version as well um, Here is the smaller version, just shows you what you can keep. There's three, three, three skeins or three sock sets actually in there with plenty of room. These still again have pockets. These have two, one either. Oh no, they do have three, one on the side. But when I put these up on Instagram last week, we sold out. So I've got another supply in. So um, but I love these. They're great for taking to the beach. They're great for taking out. People use them for all sorts of things, not just their knitting. So. Um, I thought I'd share those with you. Okay, so uh, coming to the end today, but the little bit of um, video that I'm gonna sh sort of share with you at the end is uh, I went out for a walk one early one Sunday morning and the weather was lovely. I decided to go for a walk and I sort of walked down through Falmouth town itself, uh, not out to the beaches, I'll do that on another day. But I thought I'd take you with me uh, through the town, talk you through some of the interesting sort of little bits and pieces that you can see, show you the front of the shop uh, and take you all the way down to Event Square and show you some of the boats and the harbour. So I hope you enjoy uh, my little my little walk um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next time. I'm going to give you much more details about the knit along once we've decided which shawl we're going to knit thinking of it sort of being a summer shawl so it's going to be hopefully we're going to start in uh, July, later in July and um, for those people because I've talked about sort of doing a weekly Zoom with the knit along those people that commented I will make sure that I try and do it so that as many of you can join so it won't be sort of during a working day or something I'll try and make sure that it's it's a time that's convenient for as many of you as possible but I will give you many more details about that next time so don't forget to like, to comment and to subscribe um, because it does make a big difference and I can't wait to speak to you all again soon. Bye! Good morning, it's a lovely morning here in Falmouth. Um, it's really peaceful, it's a Sunday morning, the sun's out, it's going to be a warm old day and I thought I'd go for a little walk through the town whilst it's quiet um, and take you with me and show you just a few little bits of Falmouth just in the town. Um, I'll do the beach a little bit later. Properties along here are amazing. Um, got such a great view. My father-in-law was offered one of these properties many, many years ago for £1,500 and uh, he thought it was too much of a risk to take it. Uh, I've only <laughs> Um, I'm walking down towards the Green Bank Hotel where I sometimes like to have a morning dip as the tide is right and I try and do it as much of the year as possible, not in the depths of winter, but um, it's a beautiful little spot and a beautiful little jetty. Now you can see some of these about to, to go down the steps there, they've just disappeared. Um, it's very tranquil this morning, the water's really really calm and I love it this time early in the morning when there's nobody else really about. So we're at the top of the high street now, just excuse the man, this is 8 o'clock Sunday morning and somebody's out there with a power tool, which I'm sure won't be very popular, but just going to walk down the old high street where our shop is situated, come and join me. Here is the shop, as we approach it, stitches and cream, looking mighty fine in the sunshine. Take you out onto Prince of Wales Pier, Prince of Wales Pier, oh, has been here. Oh, goodness knows how many years, but ever since I can remember. Bunting's up. And 
Here's the castle. Just on the horizon. Seagulls are at force. This is where you catch the ferry either over to Flushing or to St Moors. And that's looking down. This is the back of the town. That's looking down to one of the marinas and Event Square and the, uh, the Maritime Museum as well. This morning we need to do a little bit of fishing and this way we look back down towards the Green Bank Hotel and up towards the, up the River Fan a little bit towards Penryn and over there is the Flushing. Falmouth is full of these little alleyways and nooks so this leads down to the waterfront but why I'm bringing you down here is there is a, an amazing figurehead down here off of one of the clipper ships um, just randomly placed. Yeah, she looks pretty severe, doesn't, doesn't she? But I suppose they were meant to look look like that. I can't remember what ship she is actually off of, um, but that's her face. Oh, somebody's helpfully balanced a empty bottle of Corona on her breasts. I was talking about in the centre of town and then just a closer view converted into Airbnbs um, so if you fancy a stay pretty nice place to come and stay water water looks pretty clear here actually not a bad place to go in for a swim and I love the doorway to this property look it's the I don't know if you can see that it's the side of the boat now we're into our Winnick Street um, the other end of the town to the shop it's a quaint little little part of the town. Um, lots of restaurants, bars, quirky little shops. Willow and Stone, which many of you know, Willow and Stone is iconic for its shop window usually. Take you with me through one of the little alleyways out onto Kosmowski. Many of the pubs have got there. Um, like a garden out the back here. It's a lovely place to come and sit and have a drink, have something to eat. Very popular. And this little sheltered bit in here, inside the quay, is where I used to play water polo as a kid. I um, can't remember what the evening of the week it would be, but um, it would. I would come down and we would play water polo. The water. <laughs> I think the water was cleaner in those, there weren't the boats always here, but the water was much cleaner, but it doesn't look that clear. I don't think I'd like to go in there and play water polo now. Uh, but Customer's Key, it's a big, you can see that ship. Um, there's a big ship look there in the docks being repaired. Actually, there's another one over there. Falmouth Docks is really busy, um, which is great, uh, provides a lot of work. Um, we do tend to see ships in and we've got, I think over the summer this summer, we've got 53 different cruise ships coming in, all of different sizes, some of them with up to 5,000 passengers on them. So uh, a really popular destination for cruise ships. There's some lovely buildings here as well, look at that one. Um, home to Henry's rather posh sailing and clothing shop. <laughs> On to Event Square, as you can see there's some rather nice boats um, actually moored around here. Um, Falmouth fills up with boat people who tend to live on their boats throughout the summer. Masts everywhere. In fact, last night there was a tool ship in, but that seems to have gone overnight. 
and then um, but we have got the tool ships race starting from here back in August this year. There's that ship I mentioned earlier. The power tool out. What's the what's it with power tools and Sunday mornings? <laughs> People getting their boat ready to get out. And that's where we've come from. Looking all the way through the town. Ahead of me here is the National Maritime Museum. Great place to bring kids and adults alike. So Event Square is just full of restaurants, really. Um, lots of events happen here on the square, all times of year actually. There's a food festival happening in a couple of weeks time and um, a lot of times the stage is set up here and there'll be evening events or different fairs and things happening here. So it's a great space. Um, as you can see with a lovely view. Walking back up to home, I just couldn't resist bringing you along. Aren't these stunning? So beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed your little walk around Falmouth Town with me. Um, I will do other parts of the town out by the beaches, Pendennis Castle, at other points, but I thought I'd bring you with me on my early Sunday morning walk. It, there are surprisingly quite a few people around actually this morning, which surprised me, and a lot of power tools. Um, but yeah, I'm going to off to finish my walk now and see you soon.